Welcome to Filipino Iker Queen Time. Kung bago lang sa channel, huwag kalimutan mag-subscribe and hit the bell para lagi ng updated sa aking videos. Welcome to Bread and Pastry Production. Shout out to my students, Agoho, Santol, Alibangbang, and Akasha of Louis Y. Ferrer Jr. Senior High School. We have here the major ingredients in baking. So what are those? The first major ingredients in baking, so we have the flour. Flour is a finely ground meal obtained by grinding and milling cereal grains of other root crops. Flour is made from many other grasses and non-grains plants. So we have here the example, the ray, the barley, the corn flour, the rice flour, and potato flours, and a lot of more. There are types of flour. Flour can be classified as a hard flour or a soft flour. Number one, we have the hard flour, or known as a bread flour. There is a high in gluten content with a 12 to 14 percent protein content, and has the strongest gluten strength. The bread flour has a 12 to 14 protein content, is made from the hard wheat flour. The high gluten content causes the bread to rise and give its shape and its structure. Number 3 types of flour is we call the all-purpose flour or known as general purpose flour or family flour that has only 10 to 11 percent protein content and made from the blend of hard and soft wheat flour. And number 4 we have the soft flour is comparatively low in gluten and so result in a finer texture. Soft flour is usually made into cake flour which is the lowest in gluten content and pastry flour which has slightly more gluten than the cake flour. Number 5 types of flour is known as a cake flour. Cake flour has a 7 to 9 percent protein content is made from the soft wheat flour. It is good for making cakes and cookies, where a tender and delicate texture is desired. What are the uses of flour? Number one, provide structure, texture, and color to bake products. Number two, Provides nutritive value to bake products. So as you can see, the nutrition facts. It means the carbohydrates contain 25 grams, and dietary fiber contains 1.5 grams. Another uses. For flour is number three, used as a thickening agent. Number four, used as a binder of food. And number five, used as a stiffening agent in laundry. How are we going to store the flour? Yes, most type of flour keeps well in a sealed container in a cool, dry locations only. The original paper packaging used for main types of flour is good for a long term, but make sure that the packages has not been opened. Once that is open, the shelf life decreases. Many types of flour are now in the market and resealable plastic bags that increase shelf life. So we have here the properties or characteristics of a flour. 1. Whitish color. 2. Tolerance. 3. Strength. 4. Uniformity. And 5. Hive absorption. Another major ingredient in baking we have the sugar. 
Sugar is a sweet, soluble organic compound that belongs to the carbohydrates group of foods. They are the simplest to digest among all carbohydrates. Sugar is a class of carbohydrates that tastes sweet. It's also a quick and easy fuel for the body to use. Some type of sugar are known as lactose, glucose, fructose, and sucrose. So we have here the different types of lard. So as you can see in the picture, here are the local picture found in the Philippines only. We have known as the regular granulated sugar or white sugar, or also known as the table sugar or as a refined sugar. Another type of sugar we have confectionery sugar or powdered sugar. Granulated sugar that has been pulverized to prevent lumping and cracking. About 3% of cornstarch is added. So what are the substitutions of confectionery sugar? You can make powdered sugar from granulated sugar by simply blending 1 cup granulated sugar and 1 teaspoon of cornstarch until a fine powder. 1 3 4 cup powdered sugar can be substituted for 1 cup granulated sugar but the success of the recipe really depends on how you are using the sugar. Another type of sugar is the brown sugar. Brown sugar contains caramel, mineral matter, and moistures. It also contains a small amount of molasses that comes into three colors. What are the effects of sugar in baking? First, increased dough development. Makes the color of the crust richer. Improves the nutritive value, flavor, and aroma of the products. Makes the bread more tender. Increases the volume of a lot. Serves as a food for the yeast. Contributes to moisture content of baked products. Increases its storing quality. Acts as creaming agent. And now, the third major ingredient in baking we have the eggs. Eggs are considered a complete protein containing all the essential amino acids humans use to build other proteins needed by the body. Both the yolk and the egg whites contain protein, so whole eggs of, or their separated components may be used to set liquids. What are the uses of eggs in baking? Number one, eggs as well as flour are the structural ingredients in baking. So as you can see, if we are using the large egg compared to the medium egg. So we rather, we are going to use the large egg compared to medium egg. Egg provides leavening, add colors, texture, flavor, and richness to the butter. They act as a stabilizer in the mixture that inherently wants to separate into its two parts, like oil and water. They are very important in helping to bind all the other ingredients together. Number three uses of eggs in baking is beaten eggs are used as living agents as they incorporate air into the butter, which will expand in the oven and cause the cake to rise. Eggs are used as a thickening agent. Number five, eggs whites are used to make meringue. Another uses of eggs in baking is egg washes or brushes on the many baked goods to create a golden shiny tops. The egg whites provide luster and the egg yolk color. 
we have here the compositions of x mucine protein which is found in egg whites that are responsible for its gel characteristics ubalbumin another protein found in egg whites which coagulates and involve both and heat coagulations and whipping number three lecithin presents in egg yolk which is responsible for its emulsifying property it is a portion of the egg yolk that causes spoilage when eggs are stored at a warm temperature so we have here another major ingredients in baking so we have the fourth one is the shortening shortening is any fat which means added to flour mixtures increases tenderness this is done by preventing the sticking of the gluten strands while mixing so that the gluten is shortened and makes the product tender so we have here the example for the shortening number one we have the oil oil is made from plants products such as corn cotton seeds soybeans peanuts and other sources the rule of oil can substitute oil for melted shortening among produced oils corn oil and vegetable oil are commonly used in baking unless specific in the recipe olive oil should not be used in baking number two example for shortening is butter butter is made of fatty milk proteins it contains 80 to 85 percent fat 10 to 50 percent of water and 5 percent milk solids when used in baking it contributes flavor and tenderness butter remains solid when refrigerated but softened to a spread consistency at the room temperature and melts to a thin liquid consistency about 32 to 35 degrees celsius or 90 to 95 degrees fahrenheit another example for shortening is the margarine margarine is made from hydrogenated vegetable oil it contains 80 to 85 percent fat 10 to 15 percent of water and 5 percent salt the hydrogenation process makes oil a solid Another example of shortening is known as a lard. Lard is made up of fat from pork. Some people prefer to lard to add the fats for making pie crust and a biscuit because it gives a flakier texture. The last example for the shortening we have the cocoa butter. Cocoa butter the ivory colored natural fat of a cocoa beans extracted during the manufacture of a chocolate and a chocolate powder it gives chocolate its creamy smooth melt in your mouth texture what are the uses of shortening in baking number one make bread product tender and improve flavor number two assist in gas retention giving better volume of crust Another, prevent the cohesion of gluten. Improve the aroma, color, and texture of the baked products. Improve the shell life of baked products because of its moisture. Another major ingredient in baking we have the leavening agents. We define leavening agents are gases that cause the dough to rise. In the presence of moisture, heat, and the other, the leavening agent react to produce gas, often carbon dioxide, that becomes trapped as a bubbles within the dough. When a dough or butter is baked, it sets. The holes left by the gas bubbles remain. 
This is what gives bread, cakes, and other baked goods to rise and increase in volume. What are the classifications of living agents? Number one, we have the chemical liveners. We define chemical liveners are the chemical mixtures or compounds that release gases, usually carbon dioxide. Chemical liveners are used in quick breads, cakes, as well as cookies. Here are the example for the chemical liveners. Number one, we have baking soda, or known as bicarbonate of soda, or sodium bicarbonate. It is a chemical salt with diverse practical uses. It is a powerful liveners nurse that readily reacts as soon as it comes in contact with the butter or dough. Here are another example for chemical liveners. We have the baking powder. The example here in the Philippines, we have the calumet. It is combinations of a baking soda and acid salt. Another is we have the cream of tartar or COT. It is tartaric acid. It is fine white crystalline acid salt, which is by a product of the wine making industry. It is used in the whipping of eggs to stabilize them and allow them to reach the maximum volume. Another classification of living agents we have the biological liveners. Yeast is a living organism. Neither plants nor animals, yeast belong to a separate kingdom. In a taxonomy, the fungus kingdom. Living with yeast is a process based on fermentation, the process on converting sugar to alcohol and to carbon dioxide. What are the classifications of living agents? So we have here the biological liveners. There are types of yeast. So we have the dry and granular, compressed or cake type, and the instant yeast. Another major ingredient in baking we have the liquid ingredients. We define the meaning of liquid ingredients. It provides moisture to rehydrate and active the yeast and bring together the flour and any other dry ingredients to make the dough. It also improves the formation of a gluten strands during the kneading of the dough. Here are the examples for the liquid ingredients. Number one, we have the water. It is the tippiest liquid used in water. It performs vital role in baking, making ingredients rehydrated. The right amount of water helps to solve all other ingredients in butter and in dough to form smooth, workable mixtures. And that way, water acts as a binding agent for any baked products. And the last example, we have the milk and other dairy products. Milk and cream like water, moistened dough, and butter. Unlike water, they add a slight flavor to the final baked goods and increase its richness. Milk and cream also create a fuller, moisture textures in baked goods and help them brown on the surface. They also contribute to the nutritive value of baked goods. So we have here the types of milk used in baking. First, we have the fresh milk or known as a whole milk, evaporated milk, condensed milk, skim milk, and powder or dry milk. All are in the pictures are available here in the Philippines. So as you can see, for the evaporated milk, we have the cowbell. For the evaporated milk, we have here the Alaska, but take note, 
a lot of products available here in the Philippines, in our area. Here are the uses of milk and baking. Increase nutritive value of baked products. Enhance textures and increase soften in baked goods. Act as a strengthener when mixing with flour because it helps in the formations of gluten which give a baked item structures, provide moisture and tenderness to baked goods, enhance flavor, extend the shelf life of a cake, boss, crust color. And we have also the minor ingredients in baking. They are not as important as the major ingredients, but they are the essential in attaining the sensory quality of baked products. They are used in small quantity but contribute to the enhancement of flavor and textures of the baked products. These are the example for the minor ingredients that add distinctions and characters to a baked goods. Number one, we have the flavoring. Usually for the flavoring, we have the example here, the macaroni, the vanilla, the local and the branded vanilla, and the salt. For the salt, we have a lot kinds of salt available here in the Philippines. We are going to include also the spices, just like cloves, cinnamon, maize, and nutmeg. We have also the wines and rum. And we have also the coffee. And the last, we have the chocolate and cocoa. So we have here the types of chocolate. We have the sweet chocolate, better sweet and semi-sweet chocolate and the milk chocolate. Chocolate also considered as a dark chocolate, chocolate bar, chocolate chips, milk chocolate, and white chocolate. Thank you for watching Filipino Icon Clean Time. Kung nagustuhan mo ang aking video, huwag kalimutan mag-subscribe at hit the bell para lang notified. Maraming salamat!